Hello, welcome back to another mussel fishing film. Today, we're gonna to start in the shed, actually. Um, it's raining a little bit. We've got about half an hour to an hour before we need to sort of get going. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna prepare the baits using a baiting needle. This will save time on the shore. Uh, it'll also save us dirty hands and sort of, sometimes when you're out there on the shore and you know you've got to prepare a bait, but your hands are cold, you don't really wanna do it, so you don't do it, and then you're losing out on fish. So we're gonna make loads of baits, we're gonna stick them in a tub, so they're all ready to go when we're on the shore. The target today is going to be formback rays. There might be some dogfish included because they're going to be inevitable, I think. Um, it's a bit rough, it's a little bit windy, it's a bit rainy, so it's not ideal. But the weather at the moment is just awful. I can't tell you, the last three or four months have been so, so bad with the weather. So all we're going to have to do is try our best on the shore and see what we can do. So we're going for some rays. Will's behind the camera, you know him from a few of the videos and the polygraph videos and shore videos. So he's going to have a scratching rig. I'm going to try for the rays. We've got four rods and we're just going to see what we can do. So I'm going to prepare some bait and we'll see you on the shore. That's all we're making, just little squids and bluey wraps about the size of the thumb. And we're just going to pop them in a tub and we're going to do about 15 of those. at all. <laughs> Raining, but the rain is meant to stop in an hour and a bit. Um, winds are high, they're about 40 miles an hour. I'm hoping the, grip, the weights will hold bottom, but look, we're going to have to give it a go because there's a few fish been coming out recently. Um, yeah, so we're going to just give it a try and hopefully when the wind stops, it'll be a lot nicer. Hopefully when the rain stops, the rain stops. Right, okay, so first fish, this is on the pulley panel, uh, is a dogfish. Uh, Will's had, is it three dogfish, Will? Five. No, it's not. Yeah. You have five dogfish? Yeah. Will's had five dogfish. I've only had one, but I'm fishing much bigger baits and slightly bigger hooks um, for rays tonight. As I said, we'd probably get some of these. So they're on the, uh, the Frio meat hooks by Limitless. First time I've used those, really nice. It's also the first time I'm using the match rods uh, down here. And, uh, I don't know where I'm casting, how far I'm doing, but they feel nice. But we'll get that one unhooked. Get a little photo just because it's the first one. But uh, yeah, first dogfish of the night. Hopefully we'll get a few different fish as we go along. Okay, so uh, yeah, I've had a dogfish. Will's had about four or five. Um, he's using a scratching rig. And what he's also using bait wise is something that we call fresh outs, which is freshly blown uh, and pumped uh, blow lag excellent bait for dogfish whiting all sort of fish um, match anglers use it a lot uh, and they do a they do a very very good job of catching fish um, i've just lobbed out a scratching rig just to sort of get in on the fun um, i'm predominantly trying for rays later on once i've had a few dogfish i'll probably switch over to two pulley panel rigs um yeah and try for a ray predominantly but so i've had one dogfish will has got another dogfish here so if he brings it over he'll show you so that's will's dogfish there that's one of the smaller ones today. Um, you can see they're, they're, the, they're the fresh outs, what we're talking about. So they're fresh, fresh lug worm, or blow, blow lug they are. And uh, yeah, absolutely nailing them on those hooks there. Well done, William. Thank you very much, mate. Dude. Now, I'm sure you can appreciate filming at night in the high winds and the rain isn't easy. Um, so today it will be, oh, got a cracking bite there, guys. Cracking bite. That absolutely a night fantastic bite there yeah so as i say i'm sure you appreciate <laughs> how difficult it is so it's literally going to be we'll get a bite i'll wind it in and i'll bring it in and show you and i'll try and talk for rigs a bit later on but one's a pulley panel and one's a scratching rig cracking bite i just had there though oh well guys target species a form back ray that's what we came out here for that's on the frio meat hook by Limitless. These hooks, I tell you, they're serving me very, very well. I'm so pleased with them. Caught on the uh, 
Magnus match universal rod as well. My brand new, uh, very nice rod. That guy is only my second form back from the shore. Um, and the only one I've had before is up uh, on a reef. That's the first one ever I've had off, uh, off a beach local to me. I'm absolutely made up. That's what we said we were going to come out for. I'll tell you something, guys. A year ago, I never would have believed I could come out of here and just say, I'm going to try and catch that and get it. Um, me and Will have worked very hard uh, trying to become better shore anglers, and I, I think we're getting there. Absolutely made up of that. Absolutely stunning. Only a small one. Only about three pounds, but who cares? Get a nice little photo and uh, slip her back. There we go, guys. There's our form back ray. Just gonna go and pop her back now. Now, um, when it's windy and the waves are like this, you gotta be so careful and take pick your moments. I stand quite near a groin because if I fall, so if it drags me, I've got something to grab onto. So I'm just gonna come up here and then oh, throw that ray in. And then I'm gonna make sure that it's gone. Yeah, I think we're good. Yeah. Right guys, another uh, twining of the scratching rod. We've got a little whiting which popped off just on the shore. I ran and got that just to show you. And uh, another dolphin. And again, look at that. Nailed in that bottom lip with a limitless shoe. Let's get that right on there, might be a bit better. There you go. Absolutely annihilated. That was left out there for a while, so. <laughs> I did expect one. Can't believe how many fish are out there. Absolutely so many fish out there. But um, yeah, just some little scratching rig. Get that bait up a little bit more squid. Get that cast out and uh, let's see what we can get. So we've had form back ray, dogfish and white. All right guys, I'm going to try and do a little explanation of what we're doing here on these pulley rigs. Um, we're just using just small hooks. That's a Frio meat hook uh, from Limitless. Yeah, we're just using small baits, sort of the size of your finger, a bit of bluey and a bit of squid. You would have seen at the start of the video how we prepared those. We're just wrapping them up, a bit of bait elastic in them. And then these ones are quite long pulleys. They're about six foot each side. Um, that just goes up to a pulley bead at the top. Uh, and obviously a bead to stop it smashing the knot. And then you've got a swivel, which then that, so that goes down to your hook. And on the pulley side, we follow it down here that goes to our breakaway weight now obviously we're using quite heavy weights i think that's a eight ounce weight that one because it's quite rough so we're uh, having to use quite heavy weights yeah and then we've got a little limit looks uh or ss uh clip just to hold on the weight we'll get that cast out and try again oh, Wave falling again, Singlin, what do we expect? It's night number two, um, so obviously yesterday night was, was the footage you've just seen, um, and, now, and now we're doing a second night. Conditions are so different, obviously the tides have built a little bit, so the tides are a little bit bigger, but the big, biggest difference is there's no wind, there's literally no breath of wind, and there is no rain at all. Now, <laughs> great for the angler, these conditions. The fish, to be honest, when it's calm conditions like this, at night, I don't generally get great results from memory. Um, I normally do better when it's a little bit rougher uh, and the wind's kicking it up a little bit. But it's still very chopped to see out there, the water, so hopefully it won't make too much difference. I think we're probably just gonna get dogfish tonight. We, the, the targets are a ray. Again, I've got two pulley panel rigs out there, just baited with a little bit of squid and a little bit of bluey. Um, something I really advise doing um, on, on all your trips, really, your boat trips as well, if you're bait fishing, is to prepare all your baits. Now, obviously I spoke about this at the start of the video, but I've just spent about half an hour doing about 20 baits there. And they're just finger-sized, uh, as you can see, just finger-sized bits of squid and bluey. 
Um, that way, your hands don't get as disgusting throughout possession. And not only that, you're more inclined to change the bait and work hard. So we've cast as far as we can. We'll see what we can do. Hopefully the footage will be quite good because I bought a ring light today and a battery, although the ring light keeps going off and on. So I don't know quite how it's going to work, but we will see. But the rods are cast out and we'll, um, we'll check them in a minute because they've been out for about half an hour. See what the baits are like, rechange the baits, cast out again, and then every half an hour, that's what we'll keep doing. Um, probably got about four or five hours today. And uh, yeah, just gonna chill out, see what happens, and see if we can get a fish for you guys. Right, so what I've decided to do is have one rod on a scratching rig now, and obviously the other on a bigger bait, searching out the bigger fish. Um, I think the fish are gonna be sort of quite thin on the ground this evening. Uh, but the chap next to me, I think he's using lugworm. Um, he seems to be catching quite a few flat ears and uh, whiting, I think. So I'm gonna put, I haven't got any lugworm. I'm just gonna use very thin strips of squid and try um, just a scratching rig, just to see if we can put some fish on the bank. So that's what we're gonna set up now. So all my scratching rig is, is just a weight, just on a bit of a loop there. Two hanging paternosters. On the bottom, we've got a squid head. Uh, the dogfish tend to like those um, and actually sometimes you can pick up a ray still on that and then on the top hook we've just got a single piece of a little bit of squid and then i'm just going to clip that on and uh, cast that out and that'll just give me a little bit hopefully something to look at a few more bites and uh, yeah just give us a couple more fish so that's what we're going to go and put on now and cast out well it's almost like i know what i'm doing that scratching rig two fish one dogfish there nailed on the bottom lip and that's my new rod sliding down. So yeah, one doggy and one little pouting. So straight away, by changing rig, we've managed to get ourselves uh, a couple of fish. Not, not exciting, not big fish, but not a blank. Um, yeah, and the tide's starting to sort of turn now. It's starting to get going. So a couple of fish, we'll just get little photos and uh, go and slip them back. All right. Just um, resetting this rig because it got caught and we were winding that one in. Another dogfish. Um, bit of, there's some blood coming from somewhere. I want to try one of that. I think it's just the mouth, but should hopefully he'll be okay. Um, but yeah, another doggy. I think the fish are starting to feed now, so happy days. Let's get that one unhooked and uh, get it back. Right, well, on the scratching rig, guys. Little Ramondo. Little form back ray. Not tiny, but... Yeah, lovely little uh, little fish. I'll turn it around and you'll be able to see that that little limitless chinu nailed at the bottom. Fantastic little bite. We wound in and yeah, look at that. Lovely little form back ray. I believe that's a female that one. I can't see the claspers on it. So I think that's a little female. Cracking, that's uh, two rays. Well, one ray every session so far. We have one yesterday, a bit bigger than that one to be fair, and, uh, and one there. We'll get a nice little photo and get it back. Let's get her back. There we go, guys. Another Ramondo. Um, a lovely little bite, this one. Just twitching the rod tip. I was very confident that was a ray from the bite that it gave. And uh, yeah, just from striking that, it was a form back ray the way it fought. Yeah, fought me all the way in. So that's the second ray of the night. And uh, yeah, cracking. This is actually probably my best shore fishing session from here ever. It's a male fish, that one. You can see the claspers there. That tells us it's a male fish. Lovely, we'll get that one unhooked to get it back. That's all on the uh, the meat hooks from Limitless. I'll put the uh, hook links in the description. I'll also put the rod in the description as well. Since I've gone onto those hooks from them guys and the, the rod as well, my shore fishing's just taken off. It really has. Oh, well chuffed with that. Well pleased. Right, so the bites have really kicked off now. She's got a couple of whiting there. We've got another bite on the ray rod. Um, I'm thinking I might put two pulley panels on in a minute. Um, Cause I'd rather get rays than whiting and dogs. But the scratching rig is oh, it's good cause you never quite know what you're gonna get. But I might put on the other pulley panel in a second. I might set it up and get it ready. And um, yeah. But yeah, a couple more whiting. Um, little, little whiting on the scratching rig. It's just keeping us busy. I'm gonna go and uh, try and uh, 
strike the other rod in them a second because I think there's a fish on there as well. Right, that's Ray at number three of the evening. Um, just another little female. Look at that, hooked perfectly on those meat hooks. Right in the mouth. Pop that out. Get a little photo and get it back. What a great evening this has been. I've never had this many rays down here, ever. Um, I think it's a combination of a few things. One, I'm casting further now with them new rods. Um, so that's, you know, I've spent a lot of money on those and they're worth, I think they're worth the weight in gold. Um, baiting up, pre prepared for that, done all the rigs fresh. And I genuinely do think the, uh, the hooks that I'm, I'm using from that, that range are just perfect. But we'll get a little photo and uh, we'll get that little female put back. Ray number three. Right, well we're doing quite well, aren't we? Um, we've, had, we've had three rays, a pouting, two whiting, and about four dogfish, five dogfish. Um, we're using pretty pennel rigs, um, which are quite, are quite sort of, they're quite long to be honest. They're about seven foot each side. Um, in a spring tide, um, I'm not going to be an expert, I'm just saying what I've found over the years, because I failed a lot of times, um, which means that I've learned the mistakes and hopefully I'll pass them up so you can bypass these mistakes and go on to actually catching a few straight away. The, the bigger the tides, the I think personally, I think the longer the pulley rigs are, the better. Um, they, they stretch out nice and the rays seem to like it. So about seven foot pulley panels on a spring tide um, should, should do you okay. Also, also, the size of bait, I think, is really important as well. So here, they're about the size of my thumb. Really, really small bits of bait. Uh, I'm using a single hook on that uh, pulley rig as well. So it's not a panel setup. It's just a single 3-0 uh, meat hook. And it's working its wonders. Um, I don't particularly like using uh, panels anymore with two hooks, um, unless you're on the boat going for really big fish. I just don't think there's any need for it. Um, I think sometimes it can knock fish off as well. So um, actually, I think a single hook on small baits is, is better. You present it better. Um, but yeah, they're, they're all prepared anyway. So we're just sinking the hook into the bait and then we're putting a little bit more elastic just to keep it nice. Um, while I'm talking to you, I cannot see my rods. Uh, they could be biting for all I know. So um, what I'll do is I'm gonna stand by the rods and hopefully bring you back uh, a few more fish shortly. <laughs> well, <I> just lost. <laughs> didn't lose a fish but there's a fantastic bite um, and it went, went like this went like this I went up to it it stopped and it just went like that again picked into it and I didn't feel anything and it's much all the bait up the top end and uh, I missed the hook so uh, yeah we didn't uh, didn't connect into that one probably got about an hour left until I probably uh, should get some sleep um, I said I'll do some overtime tomorrow at work so I've got work at 8 o'clock uh, ish um, so yeah probably should um, have some sleep uh, for that but yeah we're gonna definitely stick out for about another hour I think well worth it um, just fired it out another two baits now nice fresh bait so we'll see if we can pick up one or two more fish so I've just decided uh, just to wind both rods in recast uh, make that my last cast <laughs> that must have been sitting on there for a good 20 minutes <laughs> Whiting are so greedy, they do take pretty much any size bait. They're quite pretty, really. But yeah, that's only a small one, so no one will be eating that today. We'll throw that one back. Well, I thought it was just worth mentioning. Um, so I've had a Phoenix head torch. I bought this for about 75 quid, and at the time, it was quite ex for me, that was quite expensive. But I must have had this head torch now four and a bit years. It, it's been fantastic. Now, it's always worth mentioning, with the night sessions, buy yourself a couple, if you've got a Phoenix head torch or another head torch, which uh, takes the replaceable batteries, you know, the rechargeables, buy yourself a couple of spare batteries, because all you've got to do is unscrew the top, take your old battery out, and then put your new battery in. Um, and that what that means is I can use my head torch for the whole sort of whole session. I'm not sort of lowering it, hiring it, lowering. And I'm not really trying to save power. I'm, I'm using it as much as I need to. Um, and I don't have tip lights, so it's quite handy to to have a couple of spares. Suddenly the wind's picking up a bit. That's why the uh, the ring light just dropped over. And I just pop that battery in that little packet there and 
Because Dan told me about these, Tackle Shop in Pevensey, they sell these, so if you're local, go and pop in and grab one if you've got a Phoenix. So I'll charge that when I get home. But now I've got, I'm gonna go have another hour as well, but now I've got another head torch. Ready to go. Yeah, just thought I'd mention that, that um, always worth, when you're night fishing and shore fishing, carrying a couple of spare batteries in your head torch. It makes a big difference and it makes your session a lot more enjoyable. All right, we're slowly coming into the end. I just noticed a slack, slack, slack bite. And uh, yeah, just another dogfish. Um, I lost the tail. I missed a really cracking bite not too long ago. So I'm gonna unhook that one. And uh, what we'll do is I'll cast that one out again. I will have one more cast because it's not all the time you get good sessions. So when you can, it's good to keep on going. But yeah, another dogfish. Um, probably had about seven or eight of those this evening, I suppose. They've not been a, they've not been a too big of a nuisance. They've actually been okay. But yeah, we'll go and pop that one back. Well, as I said, I was going to cast two fresh baits out uh, and leave them until there was bites. And uh, there we go, Mr. Fourth Ray. Um, that's another another female ray because there's no claspers only a small one it felt a bit bigger than that it was really fighting in the tide you'll turn it around you'll see that hook perfect in the bottom lip there limitless meat o free o meat hook pop that out there and there we go cracking fourth little ray it's sort of time to go home i might have one more cast with that and do 10 more minutes i shouldn't do but i might do yeah cracking what a fantastic session, uh, just using a bit of squid and a bit of bluey um, on the pulley panel rigs, uh, those nice long seven foot ones, uh, just with a single hook, so not a not a uh, panel, just a pulley rig, um, just on a, on a single hook, but cracking, excellent stuff. I'm going to get a little photo and uh, get that one back. Right, so we're just bringing the rods in now, it's time to go home and have a sleep before work. Last little fish, <laughs> a very, very small dogfish. Just chatting to um, a gentleman next to me. He's literally just had a ray as I went up there. He hadn't had one all evening. As soon as, as, soon as I arrived, I had a chat. He, uh, he had one. So we end on just a little dogfish, but it's nice to end the session with a fish, regardless of what it is. Huge thanks for watching. Hope you've enjoyed the video. I know it's been a bit different. It's not my usual standard, but it's night time. I'm on my own today. It's not easy to film. Um, and hopefully you will have learned a few bits and bobs. Hopefully I would have added some bit more bits about the rigs and stuff and how to build them and stuff in the, in the, in the first bit. So cheers again and subscribe to the channel if you're not already and take care. Cheers.